So on my left is the new Mac Studio with M3 Ultra, and on my right is the new Mac Studio with M4 Max. I want to find out how they compare, both in performance, fan noise, heat, and power consumption. I already did a video on this M3 Ultra, which is the entry-level spec with the bin chip. So that means 28 CPU cores and 60 GPU cores. The full version of the M3 Ultra has four additional CPU cores and 20 additional GPU cores, but you have to pay a high price for those additions, another $1,500 in fact. And for many, that won't make sense. But this entry M3 Ultra model is more accessible. It's a standard Apple configuration, and that means you can find it from retailers at a discount, 10% in this case. In my last video, I showed that the price increase over a similar spec M4 Max model isn't as much as you might think. But I still concluded that probably the best spec for the majority of people is the M4 Max that we have here. This is the full M4 Max with 16 CPU cores and 40 GPU cores. We have 64 gigabytes of unified memory and a one terabyte SSD. I think this spec is the sweet spot for performance and value, and if you're planning to buy a Mac Studio, it's the one I would recommend. But let me show you why by doing some comparisons with the M3 Ultra. The M4 CPU cores are a big step up over the M3 generation, and this can be seen in any test which focuses on single core performance. In Geekbench 6, for example, the M4 Max offers a 25% performance uplift, which is huge. The thing is, the M3 is hardly slow, so in the real world you often won't notice the difference. Where it will show up is in repetitive workloads like exporting photos from applications like Lightroom or On One Photo, and we'll test that shortly. The Geekbench 6 test for multi-core performance though is misleading. It looks as though the M4 Max is basically on par with this M3 Ultra. This is not the case. Of course, the M4 cores are better, but they're not that much better. It's difficult to properly test chips that have this many cores, but Cinebench is something that will give us a better idea. We're using Cinebench 2024, and running a full 10 minute CPU render test. The M4 Max here manages four renders and scores 2096. The M3 Ultra completed five renders in the same time and scores 2,687, so that's around 28% more performance from the Ultra. Whilst we are running this test, and also the GPU test which we'll look at in a moment, we check the power draw, temperatures, and noise levels. Under the Cinebench load, the M4 Max was averaging about 95 watts, and the M3 Ultra 128 watts. Now, both of these machines can peak higher than that, especially the Ultra, but these results do make sense because Cinebench is only testing either the CPU cores or the GPU cores. And obviously the Ultra chip can draw much more power, but that doesn't mean that it does that all the time. We actually noted that the M3 Ultra seemed to draw less power than the M4 Max when doing very little. But just to be clear, we are using a simple measuring device from Amazon, and this is not a definitive test. Something that a lot of people have said is that the M4 Max runs much hotter than M3 Ultra, and in the Mac Studio it has a less efficient cooling solution. So what did we see in our testing? Well, it is true that the M4 Max version of the Studio has an aluminium heatsink, whereas the Ultra's here is copper. But the Ultra is also a much bigger chip. And we saw identical temperatures without any significant load, 41.4 uh, degrees Celsius on both machines. Eight minutes into the Cinebench test, and the M4 Max here hit 46.1 degrees, whereas the Ultra had risen to 49.4 degrees. Now, how does that affect fan noise? I was all ready with a calibrated microphone and a dB meter to test it, but the fans never got audible on either machine. You've got to be very close to the studio to hear them at all. So I'd say both of these machines have very efficient cooling solutions. Let's step over to GPU performance. Again, the M4 generation GPU cores are a step up over the M3 generation, both in compute performance and in ray tracing performance. So even though the M4 Max has 20 fewer graphics cores, they are more performant. Here are the results in the Geekbench 6 OpenCL test, where the M3 Ultra shows about 11% more performance. In the Metal test, that performance gap increases to 19%, giving the win to the Ultra. Let's run the Cinebench test again, but this time we'll use the GPU to render. Now, as far as I know, this makes use of the ray tracing capabilities of both chips, which gives an advantage to the M4 Max. 
this can be seen in the results, where the M4 Max managed 31 renders and a score of 16,698, and the M3 Ultra only completed 33 renders with a score of 17,852, and that's only about a 7% improvement. So yes, the M3 Ultra does have more graphics performance, but how much more will very much depend on the work you're doing. Of course, any professionals who need maximum GPU will probably want to look at the full version of the M3 Ultra, which will score considerably higher. Let's now take a look at some typical creative workflows which rely on a mix of GPU and CPU performance, both single core and multi. We'll start with the Affinity Photo 2 benchmark. This is a Photoshop equivalent, and the benchmark shows performance for both vector and raster graphics using the CPU and the GPU. And you can see the various results on screen, and they are consistent with what we've already seen. M4 Max has better single core CPU performance, and actually performs very similarly to the M3 Ultra in GPU tests. Overall though, on the combined scores, M3 Ultra has the edge, but it's hardly night and day. In real world use, I expect you'd be hard pushed to tell the difference between these two machines. What about photography? I use On One Photo for my photo editing, so we tested using that. But I'd expect to see similar results on most photo editing applications. So here I've got 12 photos, which are all 40 megapixel Fujifilm RAW files. Most have been edited in some way. But there's some AI noise reduction and sharpening being applied. We'll just export these out to JPEG and time how long it takes. The M4 Max wins, finishing in 39 seconds. The M3 Ultra took three seconds longer. Of course, this is just 12 images. If you're a professional photographer, you might have hundreds of images to export, and that small difference will add up. Before we move on to video editing, let's take a look at AI. Firstly, by measuring the performance of the neural engine with Geekbench AI. The M4 generation neural engine is a big step forward over the M3 generation, though it's not quite as big a step as some claim. The TOPS figure that's quoted for M3 is 18 trillion operations per second. M4 is quoted as being 38. But this is misleading because those numbers are based on different precision levels. In our case, the M3 Ultra here has double the number of cores in its neural engine, but the Geekbench AI test doesn't seem to be able to take advantage of this. So for context, I'll include my M3 Max 14-inch MacBook Pro in the results. And for single precision, the M4 Max is about 3.5% more performant than M3 Ultra though this is probably meaningless to real-world use because it would be much faster to use the GPU for this type of workload. But at half precision, the gap widens to 20%. Just take notice of that M3 Max laptop score, because you can see that this test is clearly not using the M3 Ultra's additional cores. For the quantized result, we see M4 Max performing 47% better in this test. In theory, the M3 Ultra should be able to compete, or even edge a victory if the workload can be distributed across those additional cores. Now you might wonder why include this test if it is flawed? Well, simply because it's likely that other applications will have the same issue. In the real world, the M4 Max does seem to outperform M3 Ultra for on-device neural processing. Even if M3 Ultra is technically capable of more, that's not going to benefit you if your software can't make use of that additional performance. Another growing area of AI is the use of large language models, or LLMs. So we installed Olama on both machines and we loaded up the Gemma 3 model with 12 billion parameters. I'm not an AI expert at all, so I'll just present this one test. I do use the Gemma 3 model myself. I've got the 27 billion parameter model running on a PC with a 4090 GPU. Naturally, the Mac Studio is slower than that. But the advantage that these machines have is that you can allocate almost all of the unified memory to the GPU. And that makes the M3 Ultra with up to 512 gigs of memory an attractive proposition, especially if you need to run multiple models simultaneously, or if you just want to run the very largest models. You can see the results here as we get Gemma to write out some source code and an exciting short story about Tim Cook and unicorns. I don't personally see a massive difference between the performance of the two machines. And you can spec this M4 Max model with 128 gigs of memory, so if you want to run a locally hosted LLM alongside your normal workflow, you can certainly do that with the Mac Studio. 
Now to video editing, starting with Puget Bench for DaVinci Resolve. This benchmark features a number of different video resolutions, codecs, and bit rates. It's got tests for effects and rendering of graphics. And it's a great test of everything on the Apple Silicon chip. CPU, GPU, neural engine, media engine, and of course memory. Once the tests are complete, we get a basic score and a standard score. We also get individual scores for each of the 32 tests. So we can use this to analyze the specific strengths and weaknesses between these machines. And I'm going to scroll these detailed results side by side. M4 Max is on the left, M3 Ultra is on the right. Feel free to pause the video if you need to, but I'll try to summarize those results. Resolve is able to fully utilize the additional compute power in the M3 Ultra's GPU. It can also take advantage of the media engine having twice the number of decoders and encoders. So generally, the M3 Ultra wins all of these tests, but there are some exceptions. Codecs that use the long GOP process are faster on the M4 Max, and the Max chip is also slightly ahead on spatial noise reduction. The main advantage, though, that the M4 Max has is in Fusion, which is the effects engine for Resolve. These effects benefit greatly from single-core CPU performance, so you expect M4 Max to win in these areas. On some of the Fusion tests, the M3 Ultra is very close or on par, but generally speaking, if your workflow is more based on effects, M4 Max will be better. So let's look at those two final scores, starting with the basic. The M4 Max scores 12,309. The M3 Ultra is ahead at 14,066, which is a 14% uplift. Looking at the standard score, that's 11,144 for the M4 Max and 12,648 for the M3 Ultra, which is a 13.5% uplift. So I think we can call that within a margin of error and say that across this broad range of tests, on average, the binned M3 Ultra has about 13 to 14% more performance than this M4 Max. And that's probably not as much as you might expect. Let me add another result to this chart, which is my PC workstation a 32-core Threadripper Pro with 128 gigs of RAM and an RTX 4090 GPU. It scores 10,547. Now, to be clear, that result is being affected by the much lower single-core performance of that CPU. And of course, if you have any task that involves GPU effects, the NVIDIA 4090 card will wipe the floor with either of these machines. But for everything else, this is the key superpower of the Apple Silicon chips. And either of these machines is a great choice for video editors. Inevitably, some will ask me, what about Premiere Pro or After Effects or Final Cut? I don't use these applications, but I expect After Effects results would be pretty much the same story as Fusion. And Final Cut Pro will probably broadly compare with Resolve Studio because they're both very well optimized for these chips. Premiere Pro traditionally has been less well optimized, but as I have no experience with it, you probably need to find some other comparisons on YouTube. And I'd absolutely suggest gathering a range of opinions from different reviewers to help you zero in on the spec that works for you. Just one last test then. We put together a short Resolve timeline with a range of different video codecs. Some of these clips have had effects added to them and noise reduction. There are some color grades and there are some fusion effects with tracking. Let's just do the final render on each of these machines. And the M4 Max finishes in 38 seconds. The M3 Ultra in 28 seconds. Now this is just a short timeline, but if you're working on larger projects, that's gonna be a big difference. So if time is money and you're looking for the best video editing machine, Mac Studio with M3 Ultra is the better choice. Even more so if you spring the extra $1,500 for the non-binned version. And it's probably just worth saying that the two front-facing ports on the Ultra are Thunderbolt 5, whereas the USB 3.2 or 10 gigabits on the Max model. So if you need that extra connectivity or you want to connect up to eight displays, then you need Ultra. Overall though, it's not a compelling victory for M3 Ultra. In many areas, it doesn't justify its extra cost. And in some areas, it just doesn't make sense at all. If you know that you'll be working with one of the specific niches where M3 Ultra can offer better performance, then it does make sense, especially in this cost-effective entry-level spec. But for most people looking at a Mac Studio, you'd probably be better off with the M4 Max version. And after looking at these machines in a bit more detail, I'll stick with the recommendation that I gave previously. The M4 Max with 64 gigs of unified memory and one terabyte of storage.
the performance that this machine offers at its price point represents great value. And I hope you found this useful. Please let me know in the comments if you've got any questions about my testing, and please share your experience if you already have one of these amazing machines. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you again soon for some more geekery. <laughs>